Hey, so some of you guys had a little bit of trouble following along in class. Um, Dr. Lottie goes really quickly. Um, so I'm going to try my best to teach you everything you need to know about polyprotic acids in under 10 minutes, hopefully around 5. Um, so polyprotic acids are basically acids that have more than one proton available to donate to a base or to get rid of, basically. Um, so as you can see, H3PO4, or phosphoric acid, is a prime example. It has three H's that it can donate. If it loses one, it becomes H2PO4 minus, loses another one, HPO4 2 minus, loses another one, PO4 3 minus. Now what's interesting about these two is that they have a characteristic um, of being something called amphiprotic, which means that they can act as a, as a base or an acid. See, because... H2PO4 can lose a proton and become HPO4 2 minus, like you see here, but it can also gain a proton and become H3PO4. So it's amphiprotic, which means it can go both ways. Um, and because these, uh, all these are different forms of H3PO4, it therefore has multiple pKa values, right? Because this has the most number of protons to give away, and for other reasons we won't get into, this is the most acidic. And each progressive form that's below it is, become, is going to become less and less acidic because it's um, not as it doesn't want to give away its protons as easily. It still wants to give them away, but not as easily as uh, H3PO4. So this pKa would be like you know something like. 2, and then that would be 6, and that would be like 11. Um, yeah, when something's a less, is, is a, as it becomes progressively not as good of an acid, it becomes a progressively better base. So, a common way in which this is visualized um, is an alpha diagram. So if you look, um, these inter intersecting lines, this is probably like the ugliest one in existence. But if you look carefully and squint a little, you can see how it kind of forms an, an, an alpha, the um, symbol for, for alpha. And what this uh, diagram uh, states... Um, uh, is it describes the relative, the molar fraction or the concentrations of each of these components in the solution. So the black line will say is H3PO4. When the solution starts off, it's all H3PO4, and as it goes down, um, you know, as as base is added or and the or and and the pH goes up. The, the amount of that goes down, right, because it, as you add a base, it becomes, it goes, follows down this track um, and becomes H2PO4. The red will have that be H2PO4. That concentration goes up in exact proportion because the pKa's are so far apart. Most of this will turn into this before any of, any of this goes into that. Um, so... It goes up, and then that becomes the uh, the um, the most prominent species in solution until it reaches the next pKa value, pKa two. In which case, it also takes a nosedive because that's at that point, at that pKa value, at that pH value, that's when the uh, H two proton starts being torn off, and it travels down and makes H two P H P O four two minus, which will have that be in blue. And that'll go up. Um, so what you really need to know about this is to basically understand, hey, that's how alpha diagrams work. They represent, the, they, they show the different con the um, molar fractions in solution as you increase the uh, pH. What's important to know is that like you should be you should be able to be given any point along this this graph and explain what's going on. And by explaining what's going on, I mean. Um, what species is the highest in solution? What are the relative concentrations of one species to another? So right here, the dominant species is h 3 4 That's obvious. But at this point, what's the um, concentrations of the molar fractions of these two? Well, they're about equal, right? Remember, at pKa, pH equals pKa. Um, the, it's, it's, it's the half equivalence point. Um, so the concentrations of the... Um, 
acid and the conjugate base are going to be equal, right? Cool. And you should be able to do that for the entire diagram. Uh, the next thing you should be able to do is calculate the pH. Is calculate the uh, pH. Um, for example, like if I, if I say I have uh, H2PO4 minus salt, like sodium H2PO4 in solution, what's the pH going to be? And you should recognize that because H2PO4 is amphiprotic, um, let's pick another color to highlight. Um, it's in between this H3PO4 and that. Um, so it's, it, it should make sense to you then that its pH should be in the middle of the of those two pKa's of pKa1 and pKa2, so the, it's going to be the average of pKa1 and pKa2. Uh, alternatively, if I gave you HPO4 two minus, that's let's pick another color. That's uh, over here, and that one is between H2PO4 minus and PO4 three minus. So and it's so it's between pKa2 and pKa3. So it should also make sense to you then that a pH is going to be the average of pKa2 plus pKa3. It should be. So whatever species you want to calculate the pH for, it's going to be the average of the pKa's that are surrounding it. Okay? Um, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, polyprotic acids aren't too difficult. Just understand the, the basic nature of how they work. You know what happens as you increase the uh, pH, and how to calculate the pH of one of the intermediate species. Um, understand that this is the most acidic, and that's going to be the most basic, and then ones in between are amphiprotic. Um, and, and if you know that, uh, you should be fine. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions on that. Good luck.